Hey guys, Data Orchestration Guru here. And today I'm here to talk to you about something that might be a little bit heretical to some of you Airflow users. And that is doing data science and machine learning workflows with Airflow. So historically, the big problem with trying to do data science workflows with Airflow is Airflow is not really built to handle large amounts of data passing through it. It's an orchestration system. It's meant to tell other systems to handle that data so that Airflow never actually needs to take any of that compute load on. However, with the relatively recent release, the ability to use databases that are larger than a paltry two gigabytes for your Airflow backend for the meta database for storing XCOMs, now you actually can process large amounts of data using Airflow. Still not best practices in a production setting, but best practices don't always match up with real world reality. It is a really powerful tool for orchestrating these workflows. And so today I'm gonna to teach you how you can actually set up an XCOM backend and then conduct a data science and machine learning workflow using Airflow using a, in this example, a Google Cloud storage bucket as your external XCOM backend. Um, so now that we've kind of got the groundwork, let's get into the code. So first thing, as with every DAG, is we're gonna import some packages. So first we're gonna import the task and DAG decorators so that we can use the Taskflow API because it just makes writing DAGs a hell of a lot easier. Uh, then we're gonna import a BigQuery hook, DateTime, Pandas, and NumPy for some good old data science work, as well as our SK model selection for a K-fold model, cross val score model selection library, um, and a LGBMC classifier. Um, I'm not a data science guy, um, but I just kind of figured out, hey, these are some common libraries to train models and make it a little bit easier for me. But mainly in this video, Think about the concepts behind it all, not the actual practice, because I imagine you'll probably be doing your own model training with your own uh, very cool model setups. Um, so now that we've got the basic setup, let's start writing the DAG. So here we have pretty chill DAG setup. Um, you know, we just have start date, schedule interval, catch up, markdown document, um, nothing really too out of the ordinary here. And then we're just gonna call it using GCS for XCOMS backend. Um, so, or data storage here, uh, but really backend. Um, and so, now that we've got our DAG set up, let's start writing some tasks. So our first task here using the Taskflow API is just basically going to be a Python function. Um, so right here, we're gonna define it, set it as load data, and then we're gonna pull some census data um, from a public BigQuery. Um, so in this case, this is just gonna be a BigQuery hook that we've already defined. Um, and then select some SQL code. So here we have selecting um, some information from a BigQuery public data set. Um, the census on adult income data. And so this is going to get our BigQuery data source, our census data. And then you'll notice here in this return, it's actually going to return it as a pandas data frame. Um, so we're defining the BigQuery hook, um, defining the SQL statement, and then we're using this to use that BigQuery hook um, and then take the result and save it as a pandas data frame. Um, and then you'll see how we'll actually use this in practice in a second. Um, this is another great thing about the task API is you can set tasks to basically just return a value, similarly to how a Python function would. Um, so it makes writing these Airflow DAGs a lot more relatable if you're just you know, used to writing a lot of Python scripts. Um, so enough talking, let's get to the next task. So our next task is a chonky boy. Um, so we're gonna define it, add task, define pre-processing, say data frame, we are passing a pandas data frame into it as an argument. Um, so you see here, we're cleaning the de that data, preparing it for feature engineering, and then passing that data frame uh, via an XCOM to a GCS bucket. Um, so keyword data frame here is the raw data pulled from data BigQuery. And so that is this data that we already have pulled. Um, so right here, DF referencing again, that data frame we're pulling in. So as you can see, you get paying this data frame. Um, we'll actually link that data set to this future task when we're doing the bit mapping. Uh, but for now, just you can reference it as DF. Um, so DF, drop in A, drop any null values, drop any duplicates, typical data science cleaning work. Um, then we're gonna clean some categorical columns. So just cleaning to apply um, any columns that don't meet these parameters. Um, let's apply them to make them a string. Um, then. See here, we're going to rename uh, question mark values as unknown. Um, so we want these all just to be strings, not question marks. Um, so for any work class, occupation, or native country, just mark that question mark and change it to an unknown. So again, typical data cleaning. 
um, and then dropping any extra columns, um, in this case, just a couple columns that we're not actually gonna use in this data science workflow. And then once we're done, it's going to return another pandas data frame for us to use. Um, so in the next task, we will see how we're going to bring this into a GCS bucket. So now that we've done some pre-processing, we're going to our next task, which is feature engineering. Again, using that data frame as the pandas data frame. Um, and so once we go down here, one hot encoding, we are adding some prefixes um, and encoding this data set to get any dummies um, within those and add a prefix to them. Uh, then we are going to bin the various ages to slice up the um, ages of the census data into bins, um, just for cleaning it all up for our model. Then setting dependent variable, um, so never married is equal to marital status, never married. Um, and so this is going to help us when we're actually setting up our model by saying, hey, if they're married, give them value one, else, or if they're never married, give them value one, else give them a zero. Um, and then dropping redundant columns. So since we already have never married instead of marital status, we can drop that. We can drop any income bracket below 50K because we're not interested in them. And we're also able to drop age because we already added them to age bins. Um, and then finally, this is going to return a further cleaned and ready for and done with our feature engineering data set. So now we've got that, let's start training and validating our model. Now the fun stuff, no more cleaning, we can get into it. So with this cross validation task, basically what we're doing is again, using that data frame um, and we are going to train and validate a model and return that accuracy score via X times the GCS background. So what's important to note here is, so you might not be saying, hey, it doesn't look like we're actually setting um, or setting anything to a GCS bucket explicitly. And that's because we've, in this example, the GCS bucket is actually set as the backend database for Airflow. Uh, so anytime you're returning any of these values from these tasks, they're going directly to that GCS bucket. So this, can, this GCS bucket can then store much larger data sets um, than it could previously under the you know older versions of Airflow that were stuck to using things like Postgres and SQLite databases. Um, so that's why there's no explicit movement here, um, but it is what's happening under the screen each time one of these functions is returned. So first, with our cross validation, we're going to set our Y value, uh, which is the values of never married. And then we are for our X value going to drop um, any columns where they were never married. Um, so our model LGBMC classifier, uh, then we're going to use for our CV which is a repeated stratified K fold model um, with N splits and repeats equals three, random state equals one. Um, then we're gonna set some N scores for cross validating that score. So we have our model, X value, Y value, scoring. We have our CV set. We have our number of jobs we wanna run for this um, and then also raise any errors. Um, and then it's going to print uh, the accuracy from this model training. Um, so you can see that it's going to see, you know, hey, what is our actual value, mean of the end scores, um, as well as the standard deviation. And then finally, this is going to take the mean of our end scores, um, which is our model results, and return it again to that handy dandy GCS bucket. Now, finally, we're in the home stretch. We're fit that final model. So here we have another task flow defined task where instead of using that data set now we are using a uh, passing that accuracy um, which is going to be a float so the accuracy score um, so in this we're going to be fitting the final model determining if that accuracy score that we've gotten from trainer model actually meets the predefined threshold to go ahead and fit this model on a complete data set um, and then it's going to return that light gbm model as a json uh, back to that GCS bucket. So again, just returning a JSON um, of that model that we just ran um, to our GCS bucket. So finally, down here, you can see this in practice where if accuracy is greater than 0.8, so greater than 80% you know, accurate, uh, then we're going to actually pass this completed model back to GCS. Um, so we're gonna reuse this data. Um, so see, we're gonna XCOM pull um, all of that data that we get pulled from this feature engineering task. So that raw data, now that we know that our model's ready to go, um, then we're going to print training accuracy, say it's all good to go. And then finally, we are going to, again, set our X and Y values, set our model, so LGBMC classifier, and then fit our X and Y values to that model. Um, and then finally, 
we're going to return the results of that model and dump it as a JSON into that GCS bucket. Um, if it doesn't meet that defined threshold for accuracy, we're just going to say it's too low. It's going to use a Jinja template to say what that accuracy value was, um, and then it's going to tell you to go back and fix your freaking model. Um, but yeah, that's our final task in this flow. So now let's get into uh, defining the flow for our DAG. So now you'll see here, I have two different options for how you can set up the bitmapping for your DAG. Uh, one's old school and one is just really condensed and ugly and has six parentheses back <laughs> in it. Um, so you can see here that instead of doing the traditional kind of arrow bitmapping, we're actually def treating all these as functions. So we're saying, hey, when we're loading data, treat that output as a data frame, then pass that data frame to this pre-processing task, uh, which is, and then take that result and store it as clean data. Then take that clean data, put it into that feature engineering task, store the result of that as features, and then pass that data set into cross validation, which will then spit out an accuracy score. Then finally, we're gonna pass that accuracy score to our fit task. So you can see this is a much more kind of data centric and logical way of actually writing the mapping for your DAG. So instead of just going, hey, run these tasks in sequence, this is data set driven. So when a data set is produced, then send that to a downstream task, which will then use that and produce another data set. Um, you could also condense this into one line if you just wanted to have each parenthesis inside of each other instead of using variables to pass the values to each. Um, but I chose not to do that because that makes my head hurt seeing six parentheses all in a row. Um, so we won't do that. Um, but now that we've gotten it all set up, you have a complete model training deck. So let's go look at what this looks like on the graph view and then we'll wrap up. So in practice, it's a pretty simple graph view. You're just loading data, pre-processing it, doing some feature engineering, uh, then training and fitting that model. Um, so <laughs> really simple part here, but I always like to just give you guys a visual representation of what we actually did. Um, and that's it. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned how to use GCS buckets as your XCOM backend, and, you know, the power that that can unlock. And keep in mind, it doesn't have to be a GCS bucket. The reason I didn't show the setup process there is because it's going to be dependent on whatever uh, data storage you're using. Um, there's a billion guides out there on how to set it up. It's basically just tossing some connections in the Airflow UI and setting your backend database as a GCS bucket, uh, but not super impactful to see in practice if you can just follow a guide. So I wanted to focus on actually, how does this, how do you use it and how does it help you get better and actually do data science on Airflow? Screw all the people that say you can't. Um, so anyways, I hope you guys learned something. If you did, like and subscribe, always appreciate it um, and have a good one. Bye.